Welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'm going to quickly show you how to install Aether SX2 for PS2 emulation on your AYN Odin 2. So, first thing you need to do is you either need to download the APK from the Discord channel or you need to install it from the Play Store. So, we're just going to install it from the Play Store. Now, Aether SX2 from the Play Store has adverts. Now, it's just adverts on the bottom of the screen when you first load the app up, not in game itself. Um, but that is the latest version. Now, as I understand it, Aether SX2 is now no longer actively updated. So the most up-to-date version is the version you'll get from the Play Store. The most common version that I see people using, downloaded from the separate Discord channel, is version that ends in 0 .3060. That's the last updated version that came out without adverts. Now, I might install that at a later date, but just for simplicity, I'm going to install this version directly from the Google Play Store. So click Install. This will only take a few seconds to download and install. And then click play once it's down downloaded. We'll just get rid of the FPS counter just now. So the guide to this is actually pretty simple. What you're going to need is two things. First thing you're going to need is a BIOS file. Second thing you're going to need is some, some um, game files. So I'll leave you to Google them and download them yourself. And for me, I use CX Explorer locally on my Odin 2 and... I use FileZilla on my PC and I zap the files across that way. That's just my preference. If you want to see how I did that, I mentioned that a bit more in depth in my Yuzu video for the Odin 2. So first things here and welcome to Aether SX2. First thing you need to do is click Next. You have an FAQ with various disclaimers. You read through them at your leisure. Click Next. In Settings, now you can adjust these settings at any point, but I'm just going to do them right here and now. Change the aspect ratio to widescreen because by default it's at 4 by 3 uh, I also changed the GPU renderer to Vulkan and the upscale. Now I normally have that set to 4x. Some games I've found run a little bit better at 3.5x, but we're just going to set it to 4x just now. Uh, click next. First thing you have to do is import your BIOS file, so locate that somewhere on your on your device. I've got it in a folder called PS2 ISO. Um, nope, sorry, PS2 ISO. I don't know why. I Called I did have some ISOs in there originally, but I don't anymore. So point to your BIOS file. That's a USA one. You can also import, if you've downloaded another, so you can do a European one, for example, and you can choose between these when you're in-game. That might impact on how some games run. Obviously, chances are the European um, BIOS is going to run at 50 hertz. USA one at 60, so we'll use the 60 hertz one. Next up, you have to point to some game directories. So we'll hit the plus button there. We will go back to where we've put our PS2 ROMs, which is in here. Got to turn them in there, so we use that folder. It'll ask if you can give access to that folder, so you have to allow that. And then click Next again. <coughs> and that's the wizard set up, basically. Now, it'll scan your ISO files and it'll add them. As you can see, that's them all here. You can see what country, area they're from, the name of them. See that annoying little advert at the bottom. I don't like this layout, I prefer to see the box art, so if you click on the four squares at the top right there, it'll click change the box art mode. Now, as you can see, there is no box art. So to scan your box art, oops, I have accidentally loaded again there. To scan your box art, click on the burger bar at the top left, scroll to the bottom, and you will find uh, an option called download covers. In here, you need to put a URL in to point to where it's going to scan for all the corresponding box art. Now, on GitHub, there is a user who's posted as Xlenor, who has created a, a couple of links here, a couple of URLs. One of them has 3D box art, one of them has 2D box art. I prefer the 2D box art. So I'll do a link in the description below. You can have a look at their uh, GitHub, GitHub page, scroll through, follow their instructions if you wish. Um, basically, you just need to take the URL in here. So the URL I'm going to use is HTTPS. And it's um, raw GitHub user content dot com forward slash xlenor forward slash ps2 hyphen covers forward slash main forward slash covers forward slash default forward slash dollar sign open curly bracket serial 
close curly bracket dot jpg. So I'll quickly scan, make sure you've got that taped in right, and then click done. And on the next page, just click download. I'll go away, it'll scan all your ISO files, and I'll pair them up with the corresponding box art. And there we have it. And I've never had any issues with it picking box art. It always seems to work. So next, next two things that you've got left to do. One is if you have a Retro Achievements account, add that. So you click on your menu option here and go to App Settings. Cross at the top to Achievements and enable Retro Achievements. Make sure you turn off Hardcore Mode. And at the bottom, it'll ask you for your account. So my account is Handheld Gaming. And then sign in. And that's me logged in. Definitely worth doing because you get sort of modern type achievements that you would get from PS3 onwards, but on your older consoles. So that's pretty good. Gives a little bit of competitive edge, I think, when you're competing with other people as well, which is good fun. The next thing you kind of need to do now is set up your controllers. So go into controller settings. Under port 1, it'll be set up as a DualShock 2, but it sets up by default as a left stick only setup. So if you go to touch screen, you'll see it says touch screen, control view, single analog stick. So you want to change that to a dual stick. And that's that bit set up. Now you can go into settings. You can, in fact, it's another port one, I think. You can set your bindings up here. So if you were to click on binding for up, you can push up and it will map that button. And it'll map all your different buttons here. And there is also an option near the bottom here for sensitivity for your analog sticks. Now I'm not going to do it this way. What I'm going to do is I'm going to just load a game. So we'll load up something like God of War, we'll see. I'll turn the volume right down. And then it gives your on-screen controls. Yeah? So if you swipe from the right and go to key adapter, you'll get your overlay up. And now from there, you can add all your buttons. And the reason I prefer to do this is partly because once you've added a stick, you can click on that stick and you can change the sensitivity on the fly really easily. So that, that's why I prefer to do it that way. So line all your buttons up the way you want them. The good news is you can map your bind, bind your buttons however you like this way, which is quite good. This only takes a few seconds to set up and it's a set up and forget option really. And then try and just make sure they're lined up relatively well. Don't want any of them overlapping at all, as long as they're touching on the virtual on screen. Okay, so once you're happy you've got all these buttons mapped, you can just click the tick box, box there if you want, or you can click on the rename. You can rename your uh, profile to whatever you wish. We'll just leave it at that, click the tick, and now you can see we've got all our controls working. Everything seems to be working on screen. So the next thing I would do is swipe from the left again. Go back into the controller settings and go into touch screen. And if you scroll down a bit, you will find the overlay opacity. So you can click that, the down arrow on that. So it's 75% by default. So just click and hold. And eventually it'll zap all the way down to zero. And then you can cut out there. Now you've got no on screen prompts. And that's a setup. So we can load in a previous game load. Okay, there wasn't one on there. Means I'll do a new game. And that's all working. And uh, that's how easy it is to set up Ether SX2 on the AYN Odin 2. And it, and it runs like a dream. You will find, obviously if I turn on the uh, FPS counter just now, it'll be running about 27-ish. So that's just a cinematic stage at the start. The problem with some of these older PS2 games, you can't skip the initial cutscene. But um, four times upscale, it will generally run at 60 FPS. Now, if I have a look here, I might actually be in performance mode. I can switch that back to standard mode, which is the lowest performance mode on this. And you'll find it'll actually run really well. Now, my personal view is, if you run it at four times resolution, that's 1080p. 
and it'll look great. However, you may need to go to performance mode. Personally, my view is I would probably dial that back to 3.5 times upscaling and keep it locked to closer to 60 FPS that way while staying in standard performance mode because it still looks absolutely fantastic at that. So as you can see, it's around about 50 FPS just now. So if we just swipe, let's pause the screen just now. If we go into the settings, we can change the graphics setting here to 3.5 times and just pop back in the game. And as you can see here, well, that's actually running at 58 FPS, pretty locked 50 FPS. So I wonder if that's, it could be that my um, ISO file is a European one. So that's where it's running at 50 FPS. Anyway, if you like what I do here, please like, share and subscribe and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye for now.